Howdy, 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 my name is Anashi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Prequel. In the last episode, I stopped at a slightly awkward spot for the express purpose of the dinner taking place. In this episode, instead of having some of it be in last episode, or having it be in last episode and just make that episode longer than it needed to be. So, uh, Quill Weave now knows that Katia has a thing with uh, royalty in general, the Countess doesn't like adventures, and she's afraid of getting given alcohol. Uh, Aelderin uh, wrote, Also, you kind of have nothing to worry about, or to talk about if anyone asks you. Also, I kind of have nothing to talk about if anyone asks me. Yeah, I probably could have just went to the next page, I just didn't even check. Vinavidavici wrote, Oh, and make sure the clear uh, drink is not vodka or something alcoholic, though. Better safe than sorry, you carefully sniff the clear liquid to make sure it is in fact regular water. Yep, clear, crisp, and refreshing, especially after running all over town. That's adorable. Also, boop. Um, Wimbrel wrote, Why, well, I do believe I see a lady getting ready to sit down. You should take your cues from Quill Weave on how to behave here. So Requiem wrote, Is that the Countess in the green dress in the background? You take note of the woman approaching. Is that the Countess? No, Quill Weave says, This is uh, Diary Hill. She's the Countess's steward. Diary Hill takes her seat in front of the incredibly flammable looking curtain. I mean, I guess. You must be Quill Weave's guest, she says, and it welcomes you to the castle. You say thanks and introduce yourself as Kylie Manigan. Diary Hill is, sh is sure Countess Umbrox would, li would like to meet you once she warms up a bit anyway. Cool Weave explains that uh, Diary Hill is pretty much in charge of everything here at the castle. She keeps the servants busy, the guards happy, the counts balance, technical stuff like that. Cool Weave says Diary Hill is the best steward there is, and Diary Hill agrees that this is kind of a completely true assessment. Meanwhile, over there is uh, Byrelorn, Bire the castle mage. He tortures animals or something, I wouldn't know. The man talking to him is Orin, the blacksmith. They're all pretty nice and welcoming. You shouldn't have much trouble being sociable here, Quill Weave tells you. You admit you're a lot more comfortable with this than you thought you'd be. You were pretty nervous at first, not just because of the Countess, but because you've never really been to a formal dinner before. But this seems like it'll be a nice meal and a good way to make some new connections. Anyway, if you thought Dire Hill was the Countess, you're sure you won't find the real Countess to scare or anything. Quill Weave agrees that you should be fine and she thinks that you'll enjoy yourself. It's why she invited you. You really don't want to embarrass your friend here, you think to yourself, so if you start to panic, you'll just keep telling yourself, don't be crazy. You're sure that will happen, though. I mean, it's not like countesses are any different than normal people. That would be silly. Oh, Kylie, don't be crazy. So much for not paying crazy. Uh, be the giant lizard. What giant lizard? Also, um, music credit, Eternity Box from the 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Door soundtrack. So, you two's probably gonna get mad at me about that, like, immediately. But, eh. You are now Quill Weave. Kinda looks like she's about to have a nervous breakdown. She shifts uncomfortably in her seat and tries to avoid eye contact. You aren't sure what her problem is, but you have a feeling that this is gonna end disastrously. You suspect it's going to be a long night. While her attention is diverted, you draw your hip flask and make your own glass of water more interesting. You are positive this action will have no negative ramifications whatsoever, and Kaido will never know since clear rum is colorless. You're almost certain it's colorless anyway. Hello, Miss Umbernox, Kaido nervously speaks out. My name is Kaido Manigan, and you are quite pretty, and how are you today? Malona disregards the question, the, uh, addressing you instead. This must be the friend you mentioned. Please tell me it isn't the Khajiit from that little performance in the town square. It couldn't have been her, Dyer Hill interrupts. Miss Manigan is deathly allergic to pineapple. Cool, we've arrived early, so the cooks could adjust tonight's meal accordingly. You are truly a smooth criminal. Ah, pardon my tone then, Miss Manigan. Malona apologizes nonchalantly. The Kajit in question must have merely been a look-alike. A very close look-alike. Where did you meet this one, Quill Weave? I Storm wrote, Quill Weave, how do you know clear rum is colorless? You're colorblind. It's called clear rum. It stands to reason that it is clear, unless it's another misleading fake out like White Zenf uh, Zinfandel. I wonder what that is. I, I, I mean, I can Google it. What the hell is White Zinfandel? It's red wine. 
Why is what? Okay. Sushi Jaguar wrote. Also, perform experiment to see how much alcohol Kaede takes to get drunk and therefore jiggy with the fruit. Well, you are a little curious exactly how much alcohol she can take before she starts shagging the nearest solid, but it would be rather disrespectful to actually test this. You'll just get, keep a keep watch to make sure she doesn't accidentally chug your drink. The final Wraith wrote, In any case, the best lie is mostly true. Crazy8 wrote, Well, we've told the Countess that Kaede is a mage in training and needed a room to lodge. You let her stay at your home and as rent you have her do odd jobs. Kaede just immigrated to Cyrodiil a few days ago, explained to Malona. She's planning on training as a mage as soon as she can afford it. For the time being, she runs errands for me in exchange for lodging. Malona nods softly, her eyes still on Kadia. Fair enough. You certainly make the most interesting friends, Quill Weave. I do hope you found my town to be accommodating, Miss Manigan. It, it is very well kept, and I've already made some friends at the chapel and mages guild. You can tell Kadia is struggling to maintain eye contact. She seems to be coping okay, though, and forcing herself to speak slower. It's a lot different from back home, but, but I'm adjusting okay so far, I think. I see. I've never been to elsewhere my- <laughs> elsewhere. Myself, but I've heard it is much less civilized, Malona replies. I'm from Hammerfell, actually. Hey, Hammerfell represent! I haven't been back there in years, though. You from the coast? Sort of, I guess. Maybe. My father was actually a steward from one of the nobles, but I was pretty young, um... When I was pretty young, um... She hesitates, glancing around and fiddling with her silverware in an attempt to look natural. Malona's still watching her. I guess I started having some night terrors that made it hard for me to live in the castle, I guess so. We bought a farm and moved inland. Kinda seems to be getting a little tense on this topic. You think you hear her humming a song to herself? That is so stupid and also sad. You're pretty sure she just piqued everyone's curiosity, though, and Malona's about to push, to push this topic further. It might be time to intervene. Quill, we've intervened! Ace of Spuds wrote, Quill, we've told everyone you're negotiating for the rights to Kaede's story and as she is and as such she is legally bound to keep quiet about it so they can read all about it in your next gripping drama about the lower classes. It's quite a fascinating life story actually. I'm negotiating for the rights so I can work it into my next book. Hopefully you won't mind if she keeps the more interesting parts under wraps so I can still surprise everyone. You are a smooth criminal. So, Barrelorn! How has your research been progressing, Dyrae Hill asked, moving the conversation onward. You aren't sure what Kadia was so afraid of back there, but at least she seems to have calmed down now that the pressure's off her. You wonder what's going through that Kaji's head right now. Sputnik wrote, Kadia, imagine the Count the Countess in her underwear. It always works! The final Wraith wrote, In fact, don't even think of her as Countess just to be safe. Take note of the fat salad fork. Don't be crazy. <laughs> you are now the Kaji again. Everyone but you has forgotten to wear clothes. The wizard on the other side of the table is talking about how he uses rats as test subjects for his shielding spells. It's a rather fascinating topic. You listen intently while enjoying the salad the knave's servant brought you. General Mister wrote, Well now, Quill, cool, we've distracted the Countess. It'll be safe for you to take off the knave disguise. You can keep her in her underwear if that helps. But come on, she needs to be wearing a crown. She's so not royalty. You've got something that works right now and you don't want to mess that up. You don't know how many of these imaginary things are actually necessary to keep you from flipping out, so your plan is pretty much just keep them all going. And if it looks like things are coming apart, you'll haphazardly layer more mental defenses on top of it and see what sticks. For instance, now you're not even in a castle anymore. The final Wraith wrote, Also, could you do me a solid and upgrade the name to The Lady? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that word. It's just a slightly more polite way of saying woman, isn't it? Okay, that one is probably a good idea. While you're at it, you, you uh, mark the glasses of water to differentiate them from actual glasses of water. Fishbat wrote, Ask him questions as a young mage, it is good to be curious. Well, you should, you know you should stay quiet, but you don't really want to pass up this opportunity. When Barilahorn is, uh, excuse me, Barilorn, not Horn, I don't know where that came from, is done describing his research on magical defenses, you ask him if he has any tips for a new mage who is just starting out. He says the best thing you can do is to apprentice yourself under a trained wizard. Up at the university, it's even pretty common for apprentices to join the Archmage on his personal errands. Other than that, there are plenty of other mages who might be looking for an apprentice. Have you visited any of the nearby milled mages, mages guild, guild halls, or are you planning to? He has connections at some of them, as well as knowing a few unaf uh, now unaffiliated mages who are frequently looking for new trainees. 
Zod Requiem wrote, Reply that you've only had a chance to visit the Anvil Mages Guild so far. Does uh, Bayrelorn n n uh, have any recommendations on who you should talk to? You could also mention your upcoming trip to Kavash, but I noticed that there's a plate set for someone who hasn't arrived yet, and Trevi hinted that Archmage Trevon might be uh, attending, and it'd be kind of awkward for him to ha uh, have him suddenly standing behind you. Der Monster wrote, Don't mention Kavash, that way lies madness. Iwar wrote, Mention Kavash, that way lies interesting and insightful conversation. You'll let your own curiosity be the tiebreaker here. You visited the local guild hall earlier today, you explain. They helped you figure out that why you had trouble learning magic in the past, and also gave you some supplies to help you practice on your own. You've also had the opportunity to confer with a healer from the chapel and exchanged, um, ideas with a mage you met north of town. Tomorrow you were planning on heading up to Kavash and see what they have to offer. Chloe seems to notice your newfound courage. You get the impression she improves with your conversation skills. Bayrelorn uh, lights up at the mention of Kavash. He trained at their mages guild, he says, back before... The Countess offered him a position here at the castle. He doesn't know how the Kavash's mage guild is doing now, though he hasn't been back there in a while, and no nobody who has been there wants to talk about it. Chloe says she doesn't see the big deal about the Kavash's mages guild, but whenever she's in Kavash, it's just closed up. It only opens later in the day or something? None of the locals will give a straight answer about it. The lady takes a sip from her glass of water. She heard that Archimedes Traven, st uh, Traven started a petition to have the Kavash guild hall leveled. Not sure what became of that, but rumor has it that not a single person from Kavash would sign. Even Count uh, Goldwine spoke out against it. Dario Hill suspects that nobody was willing to argue with Count Goldwine so soon after the death of his sons. That was a dark day for everyone. At least after such tragedy, things can only get better for Kavash. Cranial Heartache wrote, How are you feeling so far, Kadi? You look to be pretty calm. You're actually doing pretty well. This is almost enjoyable. That eye twitch. I mean, sure, you're in a terrifying situation and only making making it through thanks to an elaborate web of self-inflicted delusions that can come crashing down at any moment, but as long as you can keep this up, it's just like being at a nice picnic with great food, no booze, and a bunch of friends. At least you're assuming this is what it's like to have a bunch of friends. You guess in reality there'd probably be more clothing, as you understand it, friends don't usually get naked with friends. Maybe you'll imagine up some rainbows to make this outdoor scene a little prettier. Nonsensical variants wrote, This imagination bit now has me wanting, uh, sh sh Shigarath. Shigarath? Sh I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, all of the Shigarath. All of it. Katia, be Shigarath. Do it. You can't be the Daedric Prince of Madness. For one, you're not a Daedra. For two, you're not cra- Ah, fuck, you're imagining rainbows. You are crazy. You come to the sudden realization that you're actually in a small room with a real Countess, lots of booze, and a bunch of people who are better dressed than you. General Mr. wrote, Whoa, it looks like you have a better grasp of reality now. You're thinking logically. Logic can sometimes help overcome fear. Dare Monster wrote, So why? You're drinking water. You're looking, honestly, much, much better. And the Countess has been kind of neutral, but positively neutral. You just got through a bit of small talk, and even if you were imagining her to be a card, it's still, it will still hurt. It's fine. Okay, before you completely flip out, you're going to try to be logical about this. You were doing all right just a moment ago, and technically nothing has changed since then. You were in a castle, eating with a countess, not panicking at all, and you were fine! You can keep doing that, and you'll keep being fine. The countess isn't even that scary. And sure, all the drinks here make you a little uneasy, but as long as you only drink from your own glass, you should be fine. And if you absolutely have to grab someone else's glass for some inconceivable reason, you'll just grab Chloe's. You were certain that action would have no negative ramifications whatsoever other than being a little rude. The final race wrote, also now that you've stopped maintaining that admittedly impressive delusion, could you answer a question for me? I mean... I thought that it was your recurring nightmare which caused your phobia of royalty, but what you told me about your childhood makes me a little bit suspicious. I mean, sure that dream would greatly exacerbate a fear of royalty to almost crippling levels, but it wouldn't create that fear. From what I understand, the king of your dreams doesn't actually do anything threatening or harmful towards you and was in fact just kind of standing there. I submit to you that you would only find the dream terrifying instead of boring or at least uncomfortable if you were already at least somewhat afraid of royalty in the first place. It's an uncomfortable topic, but what the hell, you'll explain. The nightmares did come first. At least, that's all you could ever figure. You don't know why it happened. You lived in a noble's castle, but you had never actually met a king or even seen one. But when you were about four, the nightmares started. Every night it was the same thing, just you and the king. When you tried to be brave, when when you could look him in the face and it was and think, it's just a king, the dreams got scarier. He got twisted, fanged, and gnarled. Night after night, it became the same choice. Be afraid of the king or have reason to be afraid of the king. You swear you tried to be the bravest goddamn toddler there was, and it only made things worse. Soon even the castle itself scared you.
You couldn't function. You couldn't get out of bed. You couldn't even open your eyes. Royalty and anything associated with it had become terrifying to you, and you never understood why. So your family moved. The transition from castle workers to farmers wasn't easier for them, and they always let you know it was your fault. You wish you had some reason. As horrible as it sounds, you wish you had some teary, traumatic childhood story where you were sexually abused by a king or something, but there just wasn't anything like that. No good reason for you to have your phobia. It just came out of nowhere and everyone else had to accommodate it. It's another instance of you ruining everything. Hopefully that answers the question. The final wraith wrote, And hey, your robe is lovely. Don't anyone let anyone tell you otherwise. And besides, Barrelord, Orin, and of course, Quilly, we're all dressed quite modestly as well, so I'm vetoing you feeling ashamed of your clothes. If only the people dressed better than you are... If the only people dressed better than you are to count as our steward. Pretty in a weird cat way. There's nothing wrong with being pretty in a weird cat way. You're adorable. Okay, you admit you were pretty... Probably a bit hasty with that everyone is better dressed than you remark. Thanks for the compliment anyway, it means a lot. And yeah, you're pretty sure the Countess knows you were the one who did the pineapple thing. Or pineapple performance. You guess it's pretty cool that she seems to be playing along with the lies regardless. McFrugal wrote, How's the salad? It's pretty good, but it looks like everyone finished while you were spacing out. Quilby is busy saying something about how it was a one-time trip to Coral to exchange writing tips with a colleague. It sounds like you missed an amazing conversation. Kind of refrain from drinking Quilby's water for any reason. Fake Imposter wrote, Kanye, I would not grab Cooley's drink if I were you. It probably has backwash in it, or a slimy lizard saliva. Stone Weira wrote, Doing good so far, Kanye, although taking someone's glass at dinner is incredibly rude and not to mention unsanitary. Uh, Chimeric Wilder wrote, Now, Kanye, let me tell you this. Drinking from someone else's glass is about the rudest thing that would have ever come to pass at a formal dinner. Trust me on this one, you don't want to do that. Okay, 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 consider it noted. But really, you can't think of any reasons you'd want to steal her water in the first place. You give yourself some disaster avoided points regardless. You haven't actually been keeping track of these since you left? 130-something sounds like an alright conservative estimate. Silence wrote, KW, uh, QW looks like she's in a bit of trouble. She's helped you out quite a bit. Why don't you help her out by exchanging the subject? Ask about the main course. Uh, you go ahead and change the subject for Quill Weave. It looks like the main course is being delivered, so you ask what it is. You don't recognize the smell. The server explains that since this is a port town, it's easy for chefs to learn new recipes from afar. Tonight's meals, an old favorite of the Countess, thin cut flank steak with pap a paprika, red onion, and brown sugar ma marinade, served with blackened shrimp and a side of jalapeno rice. You don't know what half those things mean, but it looks completely delicious. Uh, Ganalon wrote, start with small bites. It's a good way to measure your spice tolerance. Jalapeno dishes are not to be trifled with. Bacon Pasta wrote, remember, don't tear into it rec recklessly. Eat in a precise, delicate manner or whatever. Uh, Rubber Man wrote, Jakajit, ignore all these people and ignore just enjoy your food. Seriously, a bunch of hungry, toothy malt carnivores were just given slabs of meat. There's like two humans here, and if they don't like if they don't like you ripping your food to shreds, they can just deal with it for a little while. Invader Gur wrote, Take the jalapeno off the steak, request a glass of milk, eat your food very slowly. This is really good, but it is pretty hot. You ask one of the servants if maybe you could get some milk? You're pretty sure that helps cool down spicy food. You'll just wait until he gets back to finish eating. You can't imagine spicy food leading to any kind of disaster, but better to be safe than sorry, I get, you guess. Fake imposter wrote, Casually ask what... Coral was like in person, having never been there yourself. You heard Quo we've mentioned Coral, which you recognize as one of the towns close to the Hammerfell border. You've never been there in person, though, so you ask, what is it like? Is it worth visiting? Uh, the Countess says it's a fairly nice city. If you're looking for a place of your own to settle down, she heard there was a few houses for sale. It's pretty far from here, however. By road, you'd have to go all the way to the Imperial City and then come back west, and the roads aren't as safe as they are down here. Barrelorn adds that the guild there has some good references on conjuration, if that's your thing. You a conjurer? You're more of a set things on fire, or you say. The, you confess you haven't dabbled in more complicated kinds of magic, though, so you might not have even found your thing yet. You just got your powers recently, and you're still a little overwhelmed by it all. You'll keep that in mind, though. Oh, hey, here comes your... Oh. Oh. He did not just bring you a dish of milk. Look at his smug little face, motherfucker. Amulet Overload? You are now the Amulet of Silence. Or more specifically, you are the imprisoned soul of a puppy that has been used to power the Amulet's enchantment. Ah, oh, don't worry, bro, you've got this. You've silenced much greater mages than this lady. 
You've had Master Wizard screaming, Slow fall! Slow fall! To no avail! Skilled conjurers frantically trying to feign and vain to summon a Daedric sword and trained healers baffled at why their cure poison spells did nothing. After each of these instances, you ended up with a new owner. Unfortunately, your animalistic mind is far too simple to understand the reason behind this. But seriously, you're doing fine. Rock on, motherfuckers. The final Wraith wrote, Before you do anything, you should probably keep your face as stoic as possible and examine the reactions of the other at the table. You are now the Khajiit again. The Countess stifles a giggle and looks away. Oh, that smug bitch! She thinks this is funny! Well, it kind of is, but it's also hurtful! You're not a stray cat! Turak wrote, You managed to get this far without any disasters. Do not let a stupid waiter ruin it. Chug your water and just pour the milk into your water glass, Ice Storm wrote. You're offended, but you're not going to let this lead to disaster. There, problem solved. You try to shoot an eye of fear at the servant, but you're pretty sure it doesn't work. Probably for the best. You're just going to take this in stride and enjoy your food this time. Ignore the dumb waiter and just enjoy the rest of your meal with your company. You've done splendidly so far with no freakouts or miscellaneous disasters so far aside from your little happy world popping. You should mention the Bail uh, Baylorn. I thought there were more syllables in his name than that. Uh, about being born under the Etronach? SP. And see if he has any tidbits on ways to replenish your powers in a cost-effective manner, as well as save for yourself and those around you. Thanks! A little surprise at yourself at how well this is going. You pick up your conversation with uh, Barilorn where you left off. Explaining that you recently learned you could use magic. Some unlucky star line, but evidently made it so you can't generate your own magic, so you have to absorb it or something? You're still learning the details, but basically means you spent most of your life without any magical energy. You still don't really have an easy way to recharge. Barilorn jokingly proposes that you can simply try to make more enemies, anger the wrong people, and you'll have no shortage of mages casting spells on you. You thank him for the suggestion, but you say you'd rather not have a cult of insane wizards or something trying to kill you. He asks if you've ever been to an eye lead well. They are they're hundreds of years old, but still one of the best magic of sources, he says. There's one east of here near uh, Garlas, Asia. It's a long hike, but not a dangerous one. You could just make the trip every couple of days. Starburst98 wrote, Remark that is what charged you all the way. You were walking along the road and felt drawn to the place, and you saw this glowing blue flame and felt like you just had to touch it, so you did. And suddenly fire everywhere. You suppose it was pent up trying to cast, but no magic to use. Bacon Poster wrote, Hey! Uh, Connie, maybe you should uh, bring up being mugged on the road on the way to Kavash. Maybe they can put out a search warrant for the orc guy. Actually, that was where you got your first charge. While you were on the road yesterday, you saw a blue flame off to the side you explained, leaving out the part where you decided to investigate the ruins like an adventurer. You didn't know what it was, but felt compelled to touch it, and suddenly you could set stuff on fire with your mind. You totally got mugged on your way there, though. This highway man ran up to you, pulled out this huge sword, and demanded... The goddess interrupts you, her eyes light with an unmistakable glimmer of hope. A highwayman on the gold road in broad daylight? Yeah, you say, really big guy, an orc. If you have any spare guards, maybe you could... This highwayman, you say, was he big? Probably quite tough? Was he perchance wearing anything that looked like... It could have been looted from a dead Imperial Legion soldier? You know, dark gray, kiros, ledger kilt, jagged helm, that sort of attire? Or perhaps he menacingly questioned, mentioned that he had killed a Legion soldier? Anything to imply that he maybe, just maybe, had slain a soldier who was patrolling that road? No, you say, you didn't see or hear anything like that. Gods, darn it! The Countess sees with rage. You get the impression you said something very wrong, even if you were just trying to tell the truth? Diary Hill tries to change the subject. So how about hair products? That's a thing we use, right? We could talk about that. Barrel Lord, I've always wondered how your hair keeps that spiky shape so well. What's your secret? Uh, Barrel Lord says he uses this gel made from Deja Venom and crushed fennel seeds. Keeps his hair perfectly frozen in place. It's imported. Uh, Dire Hill turns to you and Quillweave. I guess neither of you guys really grow hair. You tell her that you usually have longer hair, you're just still recovering from a razor incident a few months ago. You used to like braiding it, though. She is really angry. Uh, Granny Heartache wrote, don't let that little slip up deter you from having the best night ever. You're not planning on it. Oh! Honestly, you're not even that scared anymore, and it feels great, like you've done something impossible. Like you've taken a step in the right direction. Like maybe for the first time in your life, you're finally living up to the name Katia Manigan. Other than a regrettable drunken one-night stand with a diseased necromancer, this is shaping up to be the best day of your life. You're having dinner with a real live countess and enjoying it. Boop. Um, I mean, sure, she's completely flipping your shit over there and ruining a perfectly good knife, but something about that just makes her all the more human. It gives you a warm, it also gives you a warm reminder that if she tries to kill you, these plates will work as shields. General Mister wrote, Seeing as how everyone is sort of ignoring the Countess Countess's outbreak, just lean over to Quilliv and ask her discreetly, as in without the Countess noticing. 
You are pretty curious why she got so mad though. You swear she almost looked happy when you told her you were robbed. That was really weird and everyone just seems to be ignoring it. You better ask Willweave about this before you mess up again. Of course, there's no way you can whisper in, in her ear without the Countess noticing. Luckily, you know an odd, an old trick supposedly created by Kajit Slaves and Morrowind? Uh, let's see if Quillweave knows, knows it too. What's her deal? Has problem with soldier who patrols road to Kavash? Countess hopes he will get killed. That's awful! Countess is, Countesses are bad people. That must be why, uh, must be the Imperial Soldier Legion guy you were advised not to bring up. Quill, we've let's go of your tail before you, uh, you can ask why the Countess hates this guy so much. The final Wraith wrote, Katia, would the Razor incident make an entertaining story? Because although it kind of sucks for you, a dose of shot in front of might be just what Umbernox needs right now. You're not going to talk about the Razor incident. It's not appropriate table conversation, and you don't even remember most of it. Aww. Epoxy wrote, would it be appropriate to try cheering the Countess up by mentioning other unfortunate things that could have, might have, maybe happened to a soldier on that dangerous stretch of road? Quillweave and Barrelorn already say Gold Road is relatively safe, and Quillweave wouldn't lie to you. Anyway, Imperial Legion soldiers are notoriously bad at dying. Every time they conquered a place, the original rulers were like, hey, start dying! And the Imperial Legion was like, no. At least that's how you understand history. McFrugal wrote, Connie, maybe you should let other people control the flow of conversation for a little while. Yem Tagler wrote, wait for someone else to converse. Honestly, you're doing much better than I expected. Keep it up, kitten. Yeah, it's probably for the best if, to, if you just hear what other people have to say. You don't want to risk screwing every, anything up. While you finish eating, Orin speaks at length about how the punishment for theft is far too severe in Cyrodiil. Evidently, you're expected to pay a handlessly high fine even if you apologize and give the item right back? That does seem a little ridiculous to you, but you guess it keeps crimes down. Orin says the jail sentences are even worse than the fines. Once you get thrown in the Imperial prison, you're never seen again. Last guy he knew was, who was incarcerated there apparently got sent off east somewhere and turned into an orange. At least, that's pr you're, he's pretty sure that's what he heard. Maybe it was a nectarine? Either way, sad fate. Go Dot is waiting for you, wrote. Uh, finish milk, request a new glass of milk. Emphasize that it should be in a glass and not a dish. Vinavidivici wrote, Cat, ask for a refill of, for your glass and throw a deadly look at the waiter while doing it. You'd love an opportunity to passive-aggress at the servant who gave you that dish, but you don't see any service in the room right now. Oh well, not like it matters. You're pretty sure Quilweave cool wouldn't mind you drinking for her glass, and besides, you have plenty of milk left. You can't think of anything that would make you urgently want more mi- Oh god, oh my god, is that chocolate cake? You've never had cake in your life? There's just been a lot of ruined birthday parties where you almost had cake. Consumed Yogurt wrote, eat the cake in small bites too, it might be really rich. Le Lexavian wrote, Before the cake ladies, ask her should we fill your glass of milk. Wimbro wrote, Eat that cake at a reasonable rate for like a normal person was eating cake before. If you need help with this, look, look quickly for a role model. Well, what was that logical thought? I couldn't hear over the taste of all this delicious cake, which makes no sense, but oh god, you don't care. This is so good. It turns out cake is basically the second best thing ever. The Countess begins telling a long, elaborate story about how this recipe was taken from an evil warlord chef whose journey to create the best cake ultimately sent him into a diabetic coma. You suspect the story is made up, but this cake is still pretty damn amazing. It's very thick and rich, though. You really should have asked the server for more milk before she left. Yeah, Tagler wrote, level with me, Katia. Do you really need an instruction manual on how to freaking eat? I'm pretty sure you'll do fine. Yeah, you really don't need the help. You're capable of making basic decisions on your own. Like right now, you really want a drink to wash this cake down and the servants are nowhere to be seen. You could wait for one to show up, but that would mean not shoving more delicious cake in your mouth. You'd ask Quillweave if you could have a sip of her water, but you don't want to interrupt the Countess. Quillweave's water glass is unattended, though. You're pretty sure you could sneak a gulp without her noticing, and certain, and I'm certain this actually have no negative ramifications whatsoever. Sure, you remember all those reasons not to sue a drink, but let's be honest, Quillweave can afford curative potions, so she wouldn't have any communicable diseases. And it's not like you have any diseases since you just drank a disease-curing potion a few hours ago. And if anyone sees you drinking your water, it'll just look like you actually picked up the wrong glass. The idea of slimy lizard backwash doesn't really bother you either. I mean, you've had more experience with uh, Argonian and saliva than you care to admit. Ask her first. What are you, a country bumpkin? Technically, yes, you are. But the Countess is speaking right now, and even a country bumpkin like you knows it's rude to speak out of turn. Now she's describing the warlord chef's cult of mercenary worshippers? The story sounds like it's going to go on for a while. Gandalf wrote, uh, do the tail thing again. Ask Quilweave if you can have a glass of her water. It's not like she's going to refuse. Quilweave is too distracted by the delicious cake. She does not respond to your prodding. Zorva wrote, don't drink the water. Water tastes like crap with sweet things. It just washes all the sweetness and leaves a thick film in your mouth of diluted, bittersweet nastiness. 
Just wait for a waiter to go get some milk that, like, multiplies the awesome of cake. Valid point? But you were planning to wash the water out with more cake. This seems like a sound plan to you since you also eating more cake. Their boss wrote, kind of the glass has alcohol in it, think on that for a bit. Who would be specifically said she would drink water to keep you safe? She wouldn't lie to you. If she did, it would break your little Kajidi heart. You're sure that glass has water? Positive. Pet peeve wrote, Kanye had decided you'd rather wash down the cake with more cake. It's not working! But tastes so good. Lutzavian wrote, Kanye realized that most adults can handle their alcohol when, uh, that can handle their alcohol want to drink it. You can have her put out a bit, uh, you, you have put her out a bit before this. It's reasonable for her to not drink water. Plus, it proves her confidence in you that she doesn't need to drink water. It's like when a dad tells a kid he's not going to let go of the kid's bike when teaching him to ride, and then he lets go anyway. And you know what What the kid usually does? He rides that bike like no person's ever ridden a bike before. Okay, maybe that's not good, but he still does well. You guess that's one way to look at it? Even then, it would still hurt you a lot of cool we've lied to you. You don't want friends to who play tricks on you or gamble with your life or break promises for a good cause. You just want friends who respect you and don't treat you like trash. Part of that in your mind is honesty. You even felt a little bad when Trevaya tried to trick you with the flask of water. But then again, you're in no position to choose your friends. Maybe someone like you just has to take what she can when it, uh, what she can get when it comes to friendship. Maybe they'll be good friends, maybe they'll be terrible friends. You like to think Quillweave is one of the good ones, you know she is. That's why I thought it's making you sad. You need a drink. Of water. So you can eat more cake! Frosted Warlock wrote, Kanye, I wonder why your brain is trying so hard to distrust Quillweave over something as basic as a glass of water? Seriously, this is getting pretty weird. You don't know why you keep thinking she spiked the water. Well, we specifically said she wasn't going to drink alcohol. Do you believe her? Yet this unsettling feeling of doubt continues to linger in the back of your mind. You're going to show yourself that there's nothing to be afraid of and that Quilliv is a great friend who would never tell a lie. You're going to take an inconspicuous, apparently accidental gulp of this water and then continue eating this delicious cake. And you'll be fine, you'll see. Sushi Jaguar uh, wrote, Kind of drink the water. Drink it down. <sighs> uh, new window. a good stopping point for this episode so uh um this has been a nashi sasuke i don't actually know what number this episode is i think it's episode seven of let's read prequel or making a cat cry the adventure in the next episode we're going to see uh how that went down after like after that happened if you liked it a like and a subscribe will be groovy if you didn't you don't need to do either one of those things and i will see y'all in the next one later